You have a wicked tongue. But then again, so do I. I apologize for the interruption, General, but I have orders from the Emperor. For me? For the Marquesa. How do you do, Ellen? So, you're running away, Marquesa? Like the rest of the French army. They have fought for their country, and like you. Oh, Pierre, my life was in danger every day. It still is. Your convoy is loaded with gold and silver plate, venting, coins, statues, tapestries, carvings, and a wine cellar packed in sawdust. The total value is some um, one million Spanish doubloons. You've missed the furniture. There's a mirrored bed. Oh. Is that the one in which you persuade the general to guard your stolen property? <laughs> Is a fool. That makes two of you. Don't mock me, Ellen. I can destroy you. I despise your kind, Marquis. You're half English, and yet you work for us. I'm half French. You married a Spaniard, and while your husband fights for his country, you steal his property. I fight for France. You fight for yourself! You have no shame. No country. You disgust me. What a pity when I find you so attractive. You've had it easy in this war, Ellen. Fluttering your high lashes and living in Spanish splendor with your dear husband, the Marquess. I married him at Napoleon's request. Do you think I enjoyed having him grunt all over me while I stole information for people like you? I never considered it. But then you've never had sex. What do you want, Pierre? You will write a letter. I don't take orders from you. They don't come from me. They come from the highest authority. You will write a letter telling your husband the reason you fled is that an English officer, Major Richard Sharp, has forced his intentions on you. And while drunk, he tried to attack you. I've never met this Sharp. Write the letter. Your property is loaded on French army wagons. Condemned ones. I can countermand the condemnation. Write. Buenas tardes, señora Marquez. Whatever we make the chief object of our desires, 
will draw our minds and endeavors after it. He who places his greatest happiness in the world will every day become more worldly. For the world he will plod and sweat. He will descend into what is low and unbecoming and will often be tempted to what is not truly fair and just. Eternal life can only be given by Jesus Christ, whose capacity to confer it the Father has sealed and certified. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Company! Dismiss! Who are you? Are you sharp? I'm the man who'll turn your arse if you don't learn some manners. I am Major Mendora. My name is Sharp. Easy. Easy. That was from my master, the Marquette de Casares el Grande. My master's wife, the Marquesa, has written to him, telling of your brutish behavior, of your cowardly attack on her. I've never met her. You have caused grave offense. So have you, mate. There is a clearing in the woods by the south road, seven this evening. What was all that about? God knows. You gave your word that I could leave. But I'm keeping it, Marquess, sir. These are condemned wagons. I couldn't let you meet with an accident on the way. So Napoleon's made you his wagon master. Congratulations, Pierre. Listen, you'll want to have a good think about this. If Wellington finds out you're done for, you know what he says, jewels are forbidden. Huh? How well did you get to know this Marquise, anyhow? Don't you start. No, oh, sir. I'll kill the Marquise. And when I find his bloody Marquise, I'll kill her. Of course you will, sir. What does he want? Major Sharp, sir! Captain, I trust you're not going ahead with this duel. Sir, the sight of Spanish blood upset you, does it? I've been speaking with some of the Spanish officers. The Marquez is a very fine swordsman. He's been taking lessons in Paris from Guillet. Well, he can take lessons in Spain from me. 